I see a noticeable difference and a noticeable response comparing a 900 milligrams epicatogen to, again, 30 milligrams YK11. Now, epicatogen has uh, some mitochondrial benefits and anti-inflammatory benefits. Didn't happen to me, but allegedly, based on scientific evidence. So from all of the chronically elevated folosatin levels, side effects, uh, liver enzymes increasing, uh, potential changes to kidney function, even though I think that's coming from an increase in muscle mass, right? Same body weight, but more muscle mass, as you can saw from the before and after pictures, and I'm certainly a lot stronger. And, well, this inflammatory reading off the scale. Now, I did some digging to see if epicatogen is known to increase high-sensitivity C-reactive protein levels, whether that's scientifically or anecdotally. I could only find one case report where um, 100 milligrams epicatogen daily from cacao powder increased C-reactive protein levels from 8.6 milligrams per deciliter to 12.7 milligrams per deciliter. So it was already elevated and it elevated by what, 50% give or take. And this is in a 56 year old male patient with desminopathy, which is a rare genetic disorder that affects desmin proteins, which is essential for the structure and the function of muscle. Desminopathy is characterized by muscle inflammation and progressive muscle deterioration, which could potentially lead to increased inflammatory markers, albeit that there's no clear correlation between desminopathy and elevated CRP levels. Uh, maybe this particular combination of dysmenopathy uh, and taking epicatogen uh, increases CRP levels by 50%. Still not as high as a CRP increase of 7,200% <laughs> that I got. I, 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 up until now, I have no explanation for it. Hopefully, a follow-up blood work will give me a little bit more insight on what's going on or if I need to look somewhere else in my entire drug stack and it has nothing to do with the epicatogen at all. All right, I'm back with some updated blood work results and it's not looking good. Actually, my blood work results look a lot better. It's just not looking good for NDs minus epicatogen product. After I got the results back last week at a high sensitivity C-reactive protein of 21.8 milligrams per liter, I uh, felt a little bit uncomfortable the next day. So I decided to do a deload, a full week off from the gym and fast for five and a half days because when you get results like this and speculating about cardiovascular disease, wondering how long high sensitivity C-reactive protein levels were that elevated, right? 7,300% over uh, the previous baseline results. I decided, you know what? No training, no foods. Let's get this under control. Take the minus epicatogen product out. So uh, from 900 milligrams daily to zero milligrams daily. And then a week later, I retested my bloods to see if uh, C-reactive protein and the other metabolic markers came down uh, tremendously or somewhat. So let's get into the results right here. I didn't do a full blood work analysis, obviously, only the markers which I felt were going to be significantly impacted from taking the minus epicatogen out and then also stopping training and stopping food for five and a half days, albeit that I had one day where I reintroduced the meals which I just discussed, consisting of several meals with chicken, beef, and beef liver, and a couple meals containing fish, predominantly salmon. Here you see that my blood chemistry and kidney function creatinine went from 1.34 to 1.42 back down to 1.39 milligrams per deciliter. So comparing the results from March 23rd to March 30th, a couple days ago, there's a reduction of about 3%, which I attribute to a reduction in food intake and a, a complete cessation of going to the gym. Creatine phosphokinase and lactose dehydrogenase decreased by approximately 21 to 28 percent. CPK went from 1700 to 1850 to 1300 units per liter, and LDH went from 220 to 250 to 200 units per liter. So, based on the results of March 23rd to March 30th, that's a reduction of about let's say 21 to 28 and a half percent. And happily, luckily, thank God. High sensitivity C-reactive protein came down with 87.2% from 21.8 milligrams per liter to 2.8 milligrams per liter, which I'm very, very happy about. Again, based on the last results, I could not notice that I was in a severe inflammatory state, but when you see your blood work results, then you feel chronically inflamed suddenly. So that's the reason why I decided not to go to the gym and take the food out just to get that inflammation under control as fast as possible and obviously take the minus epicatogen out as well. So this is a significant reduction, right? An increase of 7,300% from 0 0.3 to 21.8 milligrams per liter, and then a reduction of 87.2% from 21.8 to 2.8 milligrams per liter, still being more elevated than the baseline readings I took on February 22nd. Um, so I'm happy to see this come down. Now, 
what I could do, and I honestly don't want to do it, but I have a couple tablets of this Indies minus epicatogen left. I could do a couple days on 360 milligrams minus epicatogen leading up to another blood work result, which I can do this weekend or Monday, the latest. So let's say two or three days on 360 milligrams minus epicatogen daily, a split 180 milligrams morning and evening the more sustainable and perhaps tolerable dose regarding blood work parameters, and then see if my C-reactive protein comes up again, or that's purely attributed to this 900 milligram dose that I was running for the last 10 days before I did blood work on March 23rd. Uh, let me know down below in the comment section. I I'd rather not do it and start my myself to more potential inflammation, but if you guys really want to see it, and uh, this is a result that's completely unheard of, and none of you guys experienced this, running a minus epicatogen products yourself, then... Well, I'm willing to undergo the self-experimentation, but if my C-reactive protein increases from 2.8 milligrams per liter to anything over that, it's not lower than that. If it's 5 or 10 or 12 milligrams per liter, then it's pretty damning, and uh, I would never touch that product ever again. Let's see. In my liver panel, I just rechecked my liver enzymes. AST, I went from 59 to 99 to 67. So there's a reduction of, let's say, 32% compared to March 23rd to March 30th. And LT went from 36 to 56, back down to 46. Again, a reduction of about 18% between March 23rd and 30th. And I would attribute that reduction of, let's say, 18 to 32% simply by not going to the gym for a week. You see that CPK went down 30%, LDH went down 20%, AST down 30%, and LT went down 20%. So that's all pretty similar. And CPK, LDH, ASD and L ALT can all increase from uh, training vigorously, which is something I was certainly doing on minus epicatogen combined with 625 milligrams testosterone inotate. My ferritin uh, slow, so slight reduction with 3% and serum iron a slight reduction of 4%. Uh, serum iron is still below the reference range. Now, it's very difficult to restore serum iron levels when you only ate one day, consisting of beef and beef liver, and chicken and salmon have a little bit of iron content, but it's mostly coming from the beef and beef liver. So I will um, keep my eye on my serum iron levels. If I feel that I'm going anemic, I will start supplementing with an iron fairchild ferrous bisglycinate chelate formula, which I honestly don't think that I'm going to be needing, because if I continue with my beef and beef liver intake over the next couple of weeks and I remove this inflammatory compound, the minus epicatogen, keeping my C-reactive protein levels nice and low like they were previously before starting this experiment, then I think that my iron stores will slowly start to come up. Again, I'm consuming a lot of vitamin C as well, which helps with iron absorption, and I get plenty of copper in my diet, which helps with iron absorption as well. So I don't think that I need to supplement with it, but if I see over the next couple of weeks that my serum iron doesn't come up, then obviously I will go with an iron ferritil ferrous bisglycinate chelate and update you guys as this uh, Operation Follistatin experiment is continuing. And switching from epicatogen to YK11 at 30 milligrams daily taken orally, I'm switching to sublingual administrations next week. Estradiol saw a slight reduction by 3.5% from 220 to 210 picograms per milliliter. Previously, it was 140 picograms per milliliter, so we went from 140 to 220 to 210, which is a slight reduction of 3.5% between March 23rd and March 30th. So now after making that switch from 900 milligrams epicatogen to 30 milligrams YK11, daily split 15 milligrams morning and evening. After 10 days, I can already conclude that the YK11 is a lot more potent regarding strength and overall size and muscularity, even though it's been only 10 days. I see noticeable difference and a noticeable response comparing a 900 milligrams epicatogen to again 30 milligrams YK11. Now, epicatogen has uh, some mitochondrial benefits and anti-inflammatory benefits. Didn't happen to me, but allegedly, based on scientific evidence, has a lot of uh, beneficial effects, right? Mostly mitochondrial function being upregulated and then this uh, significant increase in folostatin levels. And uh, YK11 also has an increase in folostatin levels, but it is an androgenic compound, right? It's an anabolic androgenic steroid that was classified as a SARM, which is also known to increase folostatin levels quite dramatically, albeit that this is all stemming from animal models, not from human subjects, like you see with epicatogen. The YK11 animal models use uh, quite high dosages if you extrapolate that to the human equivalent dose, so the response regarding folostatin might not be identical compared to epicatogen. And again, I've never seen a study comparing the folostatin secreting effect of uh, minus epicatogen to the folostatin secreting effects of YK11, whether that was an animal model or in human subjects. So I'm doing the experiment 
as a industry first, 